In this video, we're going to talk about musical texture. The texture of a musical piece is determined by how many musical lines are actually present and how they interact. Sometimes I hear people saying, the texture of this piece is very smooth or the texture is very rough, but no, what we're talking about in music is how the lines, the musical lines, interact. And it's taken from the use of the word in textiles. If you can see all of these different materials here, they've got threads that are all combining together to make different textures. So, fabric is made up of different strands of thread woven together, and music is made up of different strands of sound woven together. The simplest texture is called a monophonic texture. Mono means one, phonic means sound, so that means it's only got one sound. Typically, either solo singing or solo playing. For these examples, we're going to use a simple little two-bar melody that I made up, and it sounds like this. So that is the simple melody, one line only, being played on a sample of a flute. The next more complex texture is unison. Unison still only has one melodic line, but you have more than one instrument playing it. So you can have multiple instruments playing essentially the same melody. Here we can see data representing three different instruments playing the same melody. You can see the shapes go up and down in the same way and we have notes occurring at the same times. Let's listen to it. The next more complex texture is exactly the same, but now the different voices play in different octaves. So we have several voices or instruments playing the same line, but higher versions and lower versions of the line. We've got five voices playing the line. I've decided to use samples of woodwind instruments for this exercise just so that you can hear what they sound like. Let's listen to them all playing in octave unison. Some of the notes are high, like in the piccolo. Some of the notes are low, like in the bassoon. The next most complex texture is called rhythmic unison. This means that in terms of the timing, the different voices are playing in unison. But in terms of the notes that they play, they can play not the same melody. So same timing, but not the same melodic shape. Here we have our woodwind ensemble and we've still got piccolo, flute, oboe, clarinet and bassoon. Let's listen to them all play together. Here is the original melody. Then I'm going to add a flute playing an up an octave. And the piccolo playing a higher line, which is not an octave. Let's listen to the flute and the piccolo playing together.
So they're not playing the same notes. Let's add the oboe. Now the oboe is playing a very different line. So at the beginning it's not even changing notes. Let's hear what the bassoon is doing. So it's got quite a different bunch of notes than the melody does. So they have different notes, but if we look at all the alignment of all the notes, we can see they're all occurring at the same time. If we were to get them to just clap their notes instead of playing them, they would all be clapping in unison. To get more textural complexity, we add more lines, and this adds more strands of sound. The simplest is just to have a drone and a melody. A drone is just one note which plays for a long time and doesn't change. Here is an example where we have our flute melody and the bassoon is doing a long drone. So a drone and a melody has two distinct lines. One line has the melodic interest the other just provides a background to support it. To get more complexity, we go to the polyphonic texture. This is the most complex type of texture. And this has many simultaneous lines happening at once. So it's kind of like having several melodies being played together. The important thing is each part is equally important. But sometimes we pay attention to one part, other times we pay attention to another one. So lines come into the foreground and then recede into the background. So we often refer to this as an active texture. Here's an example of a polyphonic texture. We have three voices. If you just look at the timing, you can see the activity of the different voices doesn't always occur at the same time. Let's listen to just the top voice. Well, we've heard that one before. Let's listen to the clarinet. So that's actually a completely different melody. It sounds okay by itself. Let's listen to the bassoon. Okay, so that's another completely different melody. But if we were to put them all together, They all happily coexist, and we tend to pay attention to one, then another. In fact, we tend to be drawn to the line that is having the most activity. Let's listen to it again. The last texture we're going to look at is called the homophonic texture. This is actually the most common texture, and it's where we have a melody and we have a subordinate accompaniment. It's called a homophonic texture because the 
A complement is a bunch of different lines working together to make a uniform whole. Here's our little tune being played in a homophonic texture. So we have the melody and then we have a bunch of other lines working together to create an accompaniment. Let's just look at the accompaniment. It has distinct layers here which have one sort of rhythm and these layers here have a different sort of rhythm. Let's listen. It's not very interesting by itself but it does provide some timing reference and does provide some harmonic reference. Let's put our flutes on top. So if we listen to the entire accompaniment without the melody, we get this. The individual parts are pretty boring. Listen to our oboe. So, not a very exciting part. Let's listen to our clarinet. Also not a very exciting part, but all the parts combined to create an effective accompaniment. <laughs> 